Hey guys, welcome back to Starcaster Remarks. My name is Ryan Chambers, and today we have a very special interview. Uh, today, he was very kind enough to uh, take some out of, take some time out of his busy schedule and some time out of his, uh, you know, out of his off season to come and talk to us. But uh, before we introduce Matt here, uh, please go and use that promo code THPN next time you use DraftKings Sportsbook. They're our sponsor for us, for this podcast, for this episode, and all throughout uh, THPN. Appreciate them doing that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, our, our guest of the day. I've been looking forward to this for uh, for about a little over a week now, Matt. But mm-hmm. uh, the Stars recently drafted you sixth over uh, sixth in the sixth round, excuse me, and uh, you got drafted by the Dallas Stars. You're a... And you're from Viesburg, Virginia, if I if I believe that correctly. That was where you were born, but you've got a lot of British mm-hmm. Columbia roots as well. So yeah, anyway, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and without no, further ado, yeah, no thanks problem, for having man. me on, Ryan. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. Uh, born in Leesburg, Virginia, uh, down in the states, but uh, when I was about seven, moved over to Lower Mainland here in BC, um, in Canada, and yeah, it's been here ever since. And um, you know, started playing hockey a little more serious then. And, um, here we are. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so I got to ask you about that. So, so you were, so when I didn't even know where Leesburg, Virginia was. So I, I just, I was just curious and I looked it up and it's actually pretty mm-hmm. close to Washington DC. Um, yeah. did you ever get it? Did you ever get a chance when you were real little to, or I don't even know if you remember anything from, from watching maybe the Capitals or something like that? Yeah, no, a lot of games actually. Um, I don't know how many for sure I remember, but um, I do remember I was a few weeks old, I think, and I watched the Canucks actually were in town because my dad's from Vancouver and we went and watched the game there. It's like a picture of me still kind of like the blankets and everything. But, uh, so, yeah, I've been hockey kind of <laughs> since literally day one. Um, but, yeah, no, I think I got to go to a few games there and I don't really remember it too much, but uh, a lot of baseball games, um, baseball and hockey were kind of the two big things that I liked growing up. And um, So, yeah, a little bit of memories, but not too much. Did you uh, did you ever play baseball? Did you ever get into baseball when you were younger? Yeah, I played baseball pretty competitively until I was about fourteen, or um, right kind of when, when hockey started to get a lot more serious. Um, but yeah, I loved playing baseball. Um, I just kind of like being outside and like doing something else competitively, um, whether it was baseball or track and field, something like that. Um, baseball was the one. I still watch baseball all the time to this day. Mm-hmm. Like the Jays now and. They're doing well, which is nice. So hopefully they can keep that up. But uh, uh, yeah, I always kind of love sports in general. So, so what made you want to pursue hockey as as kind of your more serious sport and uh, baseball? Was it just because you felt like you were you were more talented in in hockey, or was there something else that had had to do with hockey? I think it was just more like what I was drawn to. Like in general, I was more like I just liked playing hockey more. It was just kind of the thing that. I uh, I don't know. It's just kind of my favorite thing to do. Uh, I like baseball a lot, but yeah, hockey was kind of just the thing that like was always the first choice. And if I had to choose one, where they miss a, miss a baseball practice or a hockey practice, it was always I was going to miss the baseball practice. It was kind of just never even a second thought. So um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of just from day one. It just has always been my number one choice. So can you just tell us just a little bit about yourself, you know, non-hockey related stuff, maybe like, uh, you know, what are some of your favorite hobbies? What do you like to do? Uh, you know, maybe a little bit about your family. Like, I, I think your dad even like followed us on on Twitter, like the, the first okay. time uh, you got drafted. And yeah. I was just like, that can't be a coincidence. And I went and looked at <laughs> some of his likes on Twitter and I saw that he had retweeted when the the stars had selected you. So uh, mm-hmm. can you just tell us a little bit about your family and just a little bit about you outside of hockey? Yeah, for me, I mean, outside of hockey, uh, being from Vancouver, I like to be outside a lot. And um, It's obviously like we got, it's pretty hot right now, but we always got, you know, stuff to do outside and hikes and trails and stuff like that. And um, that's kind of the, the first thing that I like to do on when I have free time, um, whether it's with buddies or whatever, go to the lake or go to the, the ocean's really nice here so those are kind of a couple things i really like and um in terms of my family yeah i got i got a younger brother and younger sister um they're both into sports my brother plays hockey and my sister she dances and she's getting into the age she's almost going to be in university now so um you know she's taking that pretty serious and 
yeah, my dad, he, uh, he's kind of been the biggest influence for hockey for me growing up. He's from Vancouver. So he, he played hockey growing up in Canada and, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, he's the guy who kind of brought me into the hockey world and, um, and then, yeah, my mom, she's from, she's originally born in Detroit, Michigan. And, uh, I got her, her ancestry though is all Italian. So, um, like she kind of, she says that she's Italian, like her last name is Finazzo. <laughs> so, um, let's go with that. And then, yeah, so that's kind of a bit about my family and, and kind of where we came from. So now when you say Vancouver, do you, do you mean like legit Vancouver? Or are we talking like Abbotsford or Coquitlam or? Oh something yeah. Like Coquitlam that? actually. I'm surprised. Coquitlam. You know, okay. Yeah. Coquitlam. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just say for people that maybe don't know, Coquitlam is not, it's a big city. It's not huge. And I just say Vancouver, it's a lot easier, but yeah. Coquitlam uh, no, is the suburb. no, no. Yeah. I, I totally get that. That's, uh, it, that's kind of how we do things down here in Texas. We're like, yeah. you, you know where this little city is? And, and everyone's like, no, I don't know where that is. <laughs> yeah. like, okay. Do you know where Dallas is? And we're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Now well, yeah, I know where exactly. that is. Right. I so, know Frisco and Plano now. That's about it though. Right. Yeah. Frisco. Yeah. yeah. And, and we'll get to that here in a second. Close, so. uh, yeah. I want to ask you okay, about that see. here in a, in a little bit. So, um, but, uh, if you don't mind, uh, can you just talk to us like about what the draft process is kind of like, because, um, I mean, it, it, do you have to like, uh, you have to like proclaim for the draft, do you have to fill out paperwork, you know, what, and what, like, what do you have to do in order to quote unquote be drafted in the NHL? I mean, it's, yeah, it's nothing, uh, it's nothing like official like that. I think you just kind of go into your season and obviously, you have your first year of draft eligibility is if you're 17 year old season or a late 18 year old like myself like I have a late birthday so um this year it was 04s and late 03s um but there's no yeah no paperwork you kind of just go and, and play and hopefully have a good year um that's kind of yeah you just play good enough and then you know talk to teams throughout the year and, and then summer in the off season so that's kind of like what the process is I guess I mean I was a little bit new to it I never really I dealt with anything like that before and so um you know it was definitely uh a little bit something extra to, to focus on and uh kind of have in the back of your mind but at the end of the day if you just got to play play hockey and play fun and um you know try to do the best you can and um you know try to win games and the best and then the personal stuff will come after that so um that's kind of that, how i viewed it um mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes i guess but um terms for me that was kind of how it how it felt to me so uh, if i remember correctly you weren't actually in montreal when you were drafted is that correct that's correct yeah i was just on my couch with my family okay uh how, how was that feeling um when you knew you were going to be drafted by a team and you knew that you were going somewhere uh, can you describe that feeling to us of like how excited you were or you know how were you feeling at that moment yeah, it was a little. It was a little bit stressful. I think I didn't really know exactly for sure if I was going to get picked. I think you know, obviously, I have a lot of belief in myself and a lot of confidence in myself. And, but uh, at the end of the day, I think you just I was just kind of had open eyes. Like I think in the terms of my hockey career, I wanted to play pro hockey, and I didn't really want to just, um, you know, if I didn't get drafted, it was the end of the world. I think I wanted to kind of go in and do it with a long term goal, but obviously seeing your name on the screen there and then getting that call from Dallas is like such an awesome feeling. It was just like, I don't know how to describe it. It was, uh, yeah, it was cool. Really cool. Something you worked your whole life for. And, um, obviously this is just a small step in it because you know, there's lots of more, lots more that goes into the process. And, um, in terms of like trying to earn a contract and stuff like that, you got to get a lot better. So, um, but in the moment it was obviously a super cool accomplishment and, um, yeah, something I'll never forget. Now, did you get a uh, a call from somebody within the Stars organization, or was it just you found out via some other means? Yeah, I just I actually saw it. Um, I don't know if my TV was behind, but my buddy uh, Fraser Minton texted me. He got drafted by Toronto <laughs> this year. He right. texted me saying like he's like let's go or something like that, and I didn't even see it on the screen yet. So, um, <laughs> so he knew he, before uh, you did. He must have. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but. Um, and then I, I kind of had, a, I saw the text buzz and I was a little confused and then I looked up and, and Dallas had the pick and I saw my name go up there. So after that, a couple of minutes later, Jim Neal called me and 
Um, uh, any, uh, yeah, I just said congrats and welcome to the organization. And, uh, yeah, that was a pretty surreal moment, but, uh, overall it was pretty cool. And then you mentioned Frazier as well. Yeah. Fraser. Did I say his name correctly? Fraser? Fraser. Yeah. Fraser. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, you typically play on a line with him, uh, correct. If I'm correct. Right. With can loops. For, yeah. For, I mean, for the last half of the year, I think so. Um, we had a lot of things change kind of throughout the year, but uh, I probably play with him the most. Yeah. All right. Well, very cool. Very cool. That's mm, yeah. uh, I'm excited for both of y'all. All right. I, I I watched a lot of clips of both of y'all playing. And you seem to enjoy to play, uh, enjoy playing together with, with one definitely. another. So yeah, definitely. Um, well, I I also wanted to ask you about um, about something, and I hope I'm not stepping on toes when, when I uh, when I ask this question though, mm-hmm. because and because when when I when I was looking at you and I was watching you know clips of you um, after after the fact after we had drafted you. Um, I, I was very surprised because uh, I'm surprised you fell as as low as the sixth round, uh, considering, uh, especially your speed. You're incredibly fast, man. Uh, <laughs> just telling you that you, you you got some great speed to you. Um, and and I know that a lot of projections were kind of looking at you in the second or third round, possibly, and you fell to the sixth round. Um, does that give you like a little bit more motivation, maybe going into this next season to kind of show these other teams uh, that, you know, hey, I I really wanted to be drafted sooner and, you know, you guys were wrong? Does that give you more motivation? I think, yeah. I think, like I said, like before, I didn't really have a, a set thing in my mind where if I didn't get picked before a certain number, like I'd be upset. Um, but, yeah, I think my first motivation, my first thought is, is use it as motivation. And, you know, you see there's lots of NHL players in, in Dallas too. Like Joe Pavelski was a six-round pick and, obviously super successful so it wasn't more like I was kind of doubting myself and um feeling sorry for myself I think you know you got to look at it how it is and it's a super cool accomplishment to get picked so um yeah I don't know I it definitely uh it's more motivating just the fact that you have a team that wants to believe in you and you want to go prove them right um and I think it's more proving myself that like I belong and I, I gotta earn that that contract or that spot whatever it is um so, yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's obviously use it as motivation that maybe you fell a little bit lower than some of the lists had me at. Um, but at the end of the day, I think I use it more as motivation as I got to treat it like a job now because it is a job and I'm trying to, you know, make it a career. So Yeah, you still got to enjoy yourself too, though, man. You still got to enjoy <laughs> exactly. yourself too. You got to enjoy the, the little steps. And uh, yeah. And uh, I, I've talked to some other uh, prospects as well who have, who have said that getting drafted, it, I mean – I think a lot of people don't understand is like just getting drafted period is an accomplishment in and of itself because uh, there are so many players uh, that have, you know, aspirations to make the NHL that don't even get drafted. So uh, Mm -hmm. the fact that you were even drafted, no matter where you go is still a fantastic accomplishment. So uh, yeah, really props out to you for for that. So um, in what I thought was really interesting about uh, what, what I thought was really interesting about you and, uh, you know, Cam Loops and Dallas and was the fact that you kind of already had connections here uh, before you were even drafted. So obviously you, you play with, uh, you know, a lot of Stars fans know of Logan Stankoven, who you play with in Cam Loops. And uh, you also, I, I also believe that uh, Tom Gallardi is the owner of the Blazers. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, <clears throat> he's you know, uh, yeah he's yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah, he's he's the owner. Of, uh, we don't deal with him too too much. Uh, we don't see him around the rink or anything. But um, met a couple times before the draft, and then obviously uh, got a text from him after, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> So uh, how how cool is it to uh, to play with uh, Logan? Because the the two of you guys, it it seems like you guys are just workhorses. I, I mean, one of the things that kept popping up about both of you guys is that you just you give a hundred and ten percent every single shift. And your coach, I even read a uh, a quote from your coach there in Cam Loops that he like you're just one of the most hardworking guys that he's that he's had. Uh, do you think that's a fair representation of you? I think for myself, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, I think that's one thing that 
you can always control is how hard you work and um, how hard you compete. So I think that's kind of something that you just try to hold yourself to a high standard and do the best you can. Obviously, Logan, yeah, like I've uh, been with him for a few years and I played with him in minor hockey, against him in minor hockey and spring hockey. And um, yeah, he's always kind of been just that guy who just buzzes around and is always fast and hard <laughs> on pucks. And um, he's been, yeah, inspiring for me. Like I lived with him actually for my 16 year old year in Kamloops. Oh, very cool. And uh, yeah, so I learned a lot from him and just, you know, seeing his habits and how hard he competes and stuff in practice and try to push each other and um it's something that i think yeah you both you both get better from when everyone's working hard so i also got to ask you about this because you know for especially because texas is you know very very different than canada obviously uh you know when you were drafted did you know anything about texas like you know anything at all about texas not really i've I've never been to texas (laughs) before um no, I, I mean, I was born in the United States and I go to Detroit quite a bit just because, you know, my mom's family. But, um, right. yeah, Texas, I've never been. My dad actually was supposed to – I think he was supposed to take a job here like a while. Like we when we moved to Vancouver, he was thinking about taking a job in Dallas. So it was uh, like there's a chance that I could have lived there before um, when wow. I was growing up. But uh, i never been – never uh, I've never really been – south of the states like i've been at los angeles but that's about it um so i mean yeah i didn't really have any any thoughts about it <laughs> so well and obviously you you've been to texas now because obviously mm. but we can go we can go ahead and get into it but um can you talk to us just a little bit about uh development camp because development camp was about i think two weeks ago now at this point mm. yeah. um i mean how was it getting to know some of the uh, the other prospects in the star mm-hmm. system it was really fun. It was really fun. I think uh, they're obviously a great group of guys and a great coaching staff they had there. Um, I think the biggest thing was just trying to learn something that week, uh, like learn, you know, how they you know, pros guys do their habits and, you know, the practice pace, stuff like that. And, um, you know, it was such a cool facility, like the stars rank there and, and the gym and everything. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was pretty cool. I think it was just definitely more motivating on top of everything else. Like, it uh it made me want to you know work even harder and um push yourself even more to try to get to that level one day and um yeah it was super inspiring for me and definitely learned a lot i don't take away take away a lot from that camp uh what was one of the biggest things that you could take away from that camp whether it be you know something you learned off the ice or you know something about texas or you know something that you learned on the ice or something like that yeah i think uh the biggest thing i think was just staying consistent i think you know, you, you want to do everything the right way, but you want to make sure that you do it day in, day out. Um, the big, uh, like, I guess the focus of the camp, like on our T-shirts and stuff was about purpose. It was called purpose and just making sure that everything you're doing has a purpose and you're not just going through the motions or if you're saying you shot pucks today, don't just do it to say that you shot pucks, do it to try to improve your shot or something like that. So, um, you know, those two things I think are kind of, big things I learned and uh, just, you know, stuff to focus on in the future. And obviously you have a lot of stuff that you've learned like throughout your whole hockey career, but um, those are two things that I kind of wanted to focus on coming out of camp. Um, so I know that uh, Stars fans will know this name. Um, ben Bishop, obviously we saw was on the ice there at development camp a little bit. Uh, what, were there any other, you know, current Dallas Stars players that maybe made their uh, made themselves known at development camp that you met? No, nobody else uh, that came on the ice with us. But we did see Jamie Ben working out there uh, a couple of days. I think uh, he was just there as we were walking in. He was leaving. Um, but yeah, there was no other Stars players there. But I mean, going to their training camp, I'm sure we'll get to to see some of their their guys on the ice and. Um, That'll be pretty exciting and pretty uh, pretty motivating for sure. Was there any uh, guys at development camp that uh, that you're like following on uh, on Twitter or Instagram now or anything like that? Or, you know, you know, texting back and forth. Or I guess people don't text anymore; people snap now. <laughs> but you know, you, are you in contact with any, any of those guys after that development camp? No, no, not really. I mean, I you know talk with them throughout the camp and stuff. And, um but i mean logan obviously and then we had another teammate ethan brandwood was there um so those two guys i played with last year and um 
we're obviously talking like just regular, but um, no one else that I kind of met there, but they're all great guys and all, uh, you know, made some, some relationships there. It was good. And uh, just to kind of get, put a face to all the names you see, like on the depth chart and stuff like that. Um, you know, it was, it was cool. And it was definitely, uh, definitely nice to meet everybody. So, so let me ask you some specific questions uh, about you in particular. Um, Cause th- th- you know, there are certain things that kind of define a player and, you know, there are certain things that, you know, players are really proud of. Like for example, maybe uh, Chris Russell, he's very well known for blocking shots across the NHL. He's, you know, the, the league leader in blocking shots in NHL history. You know, you've got uh, Sidney Crosby, who's known for being clutch and, and really prime opportunities and stuff like that, uh, especially when it comes, you know, for example, the golden goal in the Olympics, you know, many, many years ago now. Um, mm-hmm. How would you describe yourself as a player? And, you know, what are some things that you really take pride in about your game? Yeah, I think I try to just, in terms of specifics, I would say along the boards and, and down low in tight areas is kind of where I like to, to have the puck and, and to make plays. Um, you know, in terms of just overall, I think the biggest thing I want to focus on for myself is keeping my motor going the whole game and just bringing energy uh, with just my play. Like, I think that's uh, something that I can always control and it doesn't really – it's not a specific part of the game, but it's kind of more of a mindset thing that um, I would say, like, I want to be known for. And, like, yeah, just, just always playing with that energy. And then late in the game, like, you need, a, you need a goal or you need to protect a lead. Like, I want to be out on the ice and I want to be out there and selling out to block a shot or, um, you know, being in front of the net trying to bat, bat in a rebound or something. Like, that's kind of where I want to be. And, uh, yeah, I think there's obviously lots of areas to your game, but those are some of the, the most basic things that uh, I want to focus on. Uh, what do you think is the best part of your game? Like, what are some of your strengths that you that you really think are you think you might be better at than maybe you know a majority of the NHL prospects that were drafted at the twenty twenty two draft? Yeah, I think like I said, like I think it's my my energy and my compete level. Like, you know, obviously you want everyone says you want to work your hardest, but I think it's doing it in specific ways that you can uh, you know help your team, and that's like you know whether it's along the boards, like winning battle or getting the puck out um, on the forecheck. Like I think the forecheck is one of my, my favorite parts of my game is um, causing pressure and creating turnovers, that sort of thing. Um, so I think, yeah, I think those are kind of things that um, I do better than people. Like I want to try to, to do the best that I can in those. And, you know, even if it's not true, like got to believe in yourself that you can, uh, you can do it as good as anybody. And, um, you know, it's kind of just how I think of it. Is there like a part of your game that you that you're like currently working on that you're trying trying to get better uh, at? Because uh, I, I know there's always something you can get better at, but is is there like something specific that you're like really focusing in and on right now? Yeah, the big thing is is my skating, my stride. Um, like I think I, I think I'm in tight areas and pretty quick, but uh, and when you kind of open up the ice, I want to get a lot faster and a lot smoother. A lot more efficient so that's kind of a technical thing and then obviously just i want to get a lot stronger and try to put on a little bit of weight a little bit of muscle so that's something that you kind of always are focusing on um but yeah specifically i'm trying to get a lot stronger this off season going into to main camp all right and you know this is just a question that kind of popped into my head about this because you know i hate hearing about this because the, the game is very different than what it used to be but you know when you look at "Quote unquote smaller players." I don't know if you consider yourself a smaller player, but uh, th- there are, there are a lot of teams that don't take chances on on guys sometimes just because they're quote unquote on the smaller side. First off, let me ask you: you Do you consider yourself you're on the smaller side? And you know, if, if you do consider yourself on the smaller side, you know what what would you say to that argument as to you know and maybe why it's wrong. Yeah, I think obviously, like, I'm not a big guy. I know that. I'm not going to just, you know, I'm not six, six, three, six, four, like, where I'm just going to just go and muck around guys. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't think I'm, you know, undersized. I don't think, like, it's an issue. Um, like I said, I want to get a lot stronger and that'll come with time, but I got to put the work in to, to get stronger. Um, so, you no, know, I don't think, you know, 
not a huge guy, but I think it's there's lots of guys in the NHL that aren't huge, and they're they still hold their own, they still win battles, and um, you know, a guy who I'm actually like kind of in the gym with a little bit this summer is Brendan Gallagher. He's a guy who I watched a lot growing up, um, and he's not you know super tall, but he's super strong, he's good in front of the net, and he he, he works his hardest and wins battles. So I think that's a perfect example of a guy who. Um, you know, yeah, he's not the biggest guy. He's not huge, like tall wise, but he's very strong. And, um, that's a lot more important, I think. And I, I always feel like that, uh, you know, those smaller guys just have to work harder and that just shows the character of those kind of guys. So, um, and you know, you're, you're a lot bigger than me. I'm five, five. So <laughs> you got, you got me on that. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, like you said, yeah. I mean, there's so many players nowadays that are. I mean, the the game is getting faster. The size doesn't really matter. You got like Cole Caulfield, who's who's kind of broken out. You've got, uh, you know, Alex DeBrinket, who's who's pretty small himself. You've got uh, Martin Saint Louis, who is never drafted, and he's a Hall of Famer. So, I mean, those mm-hmm. those guys do exist. So, um, I, I just thought that was an interesting question because th- there was uh, some talk about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so what were some teams that, uh, w- when you were growing up, what were some teams that you rooted for? And I, I kind of have a, a hunch as to what one of them might've been. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, growing up, it was definitely Capos. Um, yep. for like just from being Washington, but when we came over here. It was pretty easy. Like the Canucks were, they're a lot pop- more popular just cause you know, they're the only like professional team that they have here. So. Um, I mean, they have MLS, I mean, like in the BC Lions, but in terms of the four major sports, um, they only have the Canucks and it was obviously something like hockey's a lot more popular in Canada. So, um, yeah, it was, it was cool to kind of see like the whole city is kind of Canucks fans. Um, not all of them, cause some of them think they're, haven't been good for enough for long enough. So, uh, <laughs> but no, they're, it's, so it's, I like on TV, that's all I watch. Um, cause you know, the channel that I get, so um you know still be a fan of them i guess like you know just being from in vancouver and um got to go to watch games growing up a little bit it was fun and um yeah i don't know it's kind of the, the team that I've, I've watched on tv all the time just being local um but now i'll probably watch a few more dallas games <laughs> <laughs> maybe just a little bit so exactly yeah um, uh, and, and this kind of goes maybe hand in hand with, with, uh, the, the previous question here, but you know, what were some players that, uh, you kind of idolized when you were growing up, you know, some players that, uh, you looked towards and you thought were just absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously like Crosby was a big guy, like the best player in the world for, for a long time. Um, um, he's, he's like, I think he's like six foot six one. So he's not, doesn't look huge out there, but he's again, another super strong guy. Um, so yeah, he's kind of, he's kind of always been an idol for me. And then in Vancouver, they had lots of guys come through here. Sedin's were always so fun to watch, um, growing up. They're just, you know, the way they move the puck around and, and you can read off each other was super cool to see. Um, they're big fan favorites here in Vancouver. So, um, mm-hmm. it's pretty, pretty, pretty easy to root for them. Did you ever get to, to meet the Sedin twins at all? Or have you ever had the, the pleasure of meeting them? No, I, I mean, not my whole life I never met them, but it's funny. We were in Vancouver for a game, and Henrik Sedin was talking to one of our defensemen, Victor Pearson, who was um, he was drafted by the Canucks last year, or two years ago, I think. And uh, so, yeah, we, we were out. He saw him in the, in the kind of the concourse, not the concourse, the little tunnel area where our dressing room was. Um, so that was the first time that I met either one of them, which is pretty cool, though. That's pretty cool, man. That's mm-hmm. that's awesome to to, to get. Mm-hmm. I mean, Hen- Henrik and Daniel Sedin are two guys that I've always wanted to to meet, just because you know they're synonymous with you know Vancouver Canucks. Like that that's mm-hmm. that's what Vancouver is is the, exactly. the Sedin twins. So exactly. Um. Uh. And, and I, you probably get this question a lot, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask you anyways. But um, if you had to compare yourself to s- someone currently within the NHL. You know, and maybe it doesn't even have to be somebody that's like super, super current, but maybe somebody within the past five to 10 years. Um, who would you kind of compare yourself to that your game kind of uh, is the same as? Yeah, I think, I think you try to like take different parts from different guys' games. Like, 
that's going to be harder to do as a player. Like, you want to learn and, and add parts to your game. One guy I really like is Yanni Gord in Seattle now, but when he was winning those cups with Tampa, um, I just loved, like, his energy level and the way he, he just would always be a threat out there to just disturb stuff and <laughs> shut down teams and kill penalties. And um, But he would also score and he could also you know, make plays. Like, he scored the, the one goal in the game against – Islanders in that game, in the in their series, so to win the game, like he he was clutch there, and um, yeah, he was a guy who, who I just kind of he inspired me. Zach Hyman is another guy, um, kind of plays the same way, just with a lot of energy, but but brings that element of skill too. And um, yeah, those are kind of the two two guys that I see a little bit of myself in, but obviously, like you want to learn a lot from them, and they're at the highest level, so it's like uh, just kind of that energy and that enthusiasm in your game is something that uh you know i want to try to, to build on and, and be like that all right well very cool um i got a couple of just you know just random questions not they're not mm-hmm. even just i figured we just have a little fun here you know sounds good because because you know we, we get into all the hockey stuff and all the seriousness stuff and you know <laughs> You know, your career is just starting, but, you know, let's get to know, like, Matt Semenoff, like, right, real yeah. here, okay? <laughs> so, what I got to ask you is, th- th- this is a question that my wife has, you know, made me ask, because she loves The Office. So, okay, yeah. So, out of the three, Community, Parks and Rec, or The Office, or none of the above? Yeah. The Office, for me. I haven't, I've seen a little <laughs> bit of, of Parks and Rec, and um, a little bit of Community, very little though, but yeah, the office I've seen a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you ever have the uh, the chance and the pleasure of meeting um, Saad Youssef of the Athletic, he's the Stars uh, beat reporter. Mm-hmm. I-, I think he's watched The Office about twenty five or twenty seven times through. Seriously, like, all yeah. the seasons. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've met him. So, yeah, I met him at the F camp, so that's funny. I'll have to ask him about that. Yeah, you need you totally need to ask him <laughs> about it because yeah, because that was one of the things I think uh, we we've done two uh, interviews with him and one was about two years ago and that was one of the questions I had to ask him. I was just like, dude, why are you so obsessed with the office? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But, anyways, uh, another question. Um, what's something that you absolutely couldn't live without? What's something that you just couldn't live without? Couldn't live without. Um... I mean, my family is pretty important. Like, I think, obviously, they're a big part of my life. I think that's the first thing that comes to my mind is family and, and then hockey, I guess. Uh, kind of some basic answers. but <laughs> hey, no, it's okay. Um, it's good. Yeah, those are kind of the first things that come to mind. Um, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Answer the question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, what superpower would you have if you could just pick one? If you could just pick one superpower and it could be as, you know, pragmatic or as weird as you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say being able to fly probably just, I don't know, dreams you always dream about, like flying around. I feel like that'd be pretty cool. That or being able to like move stuff with your mind. I don't know what that's called, but. Oh um, man, now that's kind of bothering me. Is it? Yeah, it's not psychic, know, it's psychic, is it? It's something like psychic. I don't know. I think that'd be cool though. Something like that. It, it, <laughs> it starts like with that, a P. Yeah. It's like P S something. Something so, weird like that. Yeah. Anyway, cool, neat. <laughs> um, and then uh, last question here for you, and then uh, we'll wrap it up here for, uh, tonight. But if you could talk to anyone in history, and you were only allowed to talk to one person in history. Who would you talk to and why, and what would you talk about? One person in history. Um, Jeez. I would probably say, I'd probably say Russell Westbrook, actually. He's a guy, like, I don't know, he's, for some reason, he gets a lot of hate right now. and I guess, like, just, he's getting older and stuff, but. When he was in OKC, like he was my favorite like athlete, like of all sports. Like I have his jersey in the back in my closet, and um, yeah, like he was just like the most exciting guy to watch because he like he always had the ball. And I would probably ask talk to him about just like I don't know how he like how just 
keeps going so hard, like no matter what, like and you can just see it every single time the ball's on the court. Um, like every time he's out there, he's he's sprinting as fast as he can. I don't know, probably just like his how did he train himself to kind of come up that way and just never even take a second off. But that's kind of the first guy that comes to my mind. I don't know. There's obviously a lot of guys with great mentalities. Like Crosby's another guy obviously you'd love to talk to. Um, for a non-hockey answer, I'll go with Westbrook. That's pretty cool. That's an interesting choice. Mm-hmm. That's a very interesting choice. And you're totally right about the, the, the hate that he gets. Uh, I, I mm-hmm. think a lot of it is kind of unwarranted, if you ask me. Totally, but, totally. You know, and I mean, if a guy is older, it doesn't mean that he can't produce. And mm-hmm. I mean, even it, if he's not shooting the ball exactly, like right, I shooting mean, it well, it, he's still doing other stuff. And I don't know. No, he gets no, his best. So yeah. No, yeah, and it makes total sense because you know, you you, you see players, you know, across sports, you know, they may start with a, a certain you know role on their team, and then later on in their career, that they're still, you know, maybe not the same guy, but they're still they've evolved into a different way to you know, I, I don't know what's the word I'm trying to think of right now, trying to be. Uh, have it, I guess just find a way to help their team win, and exactly, it, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's a great answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. All right, man. Um, well, uh, I just want to say thank you for doing this, and I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, you know, uh, especially me, and I'm sure all stars fans are really rooting for you. Um, I'm assuming you're going back to Cam Loops for next season. Yeah, yeah, I'll be down there in about a month or so. We'll go out for camp, so yeah, very excited. So, uh, what are you what are you hoping for next season? Because um, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think I'm right in saying this, but aren't y'all uh, hosting the Memorial Cup next season? We are. Yeah, we're hosting that. Um, but yeah, we want to win the WHL first. We want to. Like, <laughs> yeah, y'all. We want to get back at. Uh, we lost last year, Game Seven, in the conference finals, and um, we'll be better next year. For sure. We're rooting for you, man. We really are. <laughs> that sounds good, yeah. Yep. Thanks for thanks for coming on once again, man. Um of course. And, thanks uh, for having me on here. Yeah, and thank you all of you for listening uh to this interview. Uh we appreciate you guys listening. Uh please go and follow us on social media. You can also follow follow Matthew Simonoff on uh mostly on Instagram, right? That's kind of where mm-hmm. you're mostly are at. So yeah, you can go check active. him out yeah. there. <laughs> Good stuff. Right, and uh, well, along with Matt, my name's Ryan, and we'll catch you guys on the flip side, and uh, we hope you guys have a good afternoon, evening, whenever you're listening to it. See you guys later, and goodbye. See you later. Thanks, Ryan.